Hi, welcome to This Is My Architecture. We're here live at reInvents. My name is Andrea, I'm here with Eugene for, from Muller Water Products. Hi Eugene, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, so what do you guys do? Well, Mueller Water Products is uh, a company that's been around for a very long time. We produce fire hydrants and all sorts of things for water infrastructure. And uh, over the last few years, we've been getting into the IoT and uh, IoT platforms, smart water, uh, et cetera. Very cool. So today we're going to talk about real-time notification systems. <laughs> what is that? Well, notifications are like they sound. Uh, we give them to our CSRs, or our customer CSRs, uh, customer service representatives, uh, field technicians. Uh, notifications uh, allow them to see alerts that are happening out in the field and go fix problems. Very cool. So I know this architecture is on Amazon and you're using serverless. Correct. Our viewers are interested to understand, can I walk us through the architecture? What have you developed? What have you built? Well, we developed a real-time notification engine using all serverless technology so we don't have to manage any of the operations. We try okay. to leverage as many managed services uh, as we can on AWS, and this engine is actually 100% serverless. Very cool. So walk us through this example, right? So I see SNS, SQS, RDS, bunch of notifications. <laughs> yeah. So as a consumer, right, where, what, walk us through an end-to-end workflow. What sure. happens first? You have connected devices, I assume? Correct, yeah, we have an IoT platform. We actually have over a million devices oh, out wow. in the field. Um, obviously, there's alerts and system notifications that get triggered. So we have many different services out mm -hmm. here. I won't draw them up. Uh, but they all communicate uh, via API Gateway into SNS. Uh, SNS goes to SQS. And we actually have many different SQS queues depending on the route it's going to take. I see. So we have an SQS queue for SMS, for email, uh, for persisting it into uh, DynamoDB. Uh, as well as real-time notifications on our uh, application, our okay. front-end application. Yeah. So SNS triggers and actually fans out to many different SQS queues. All of those SQS queues trigger lambdas. The lambdas themselves are where we have all of the logic. So you'll have a lambda for SMS, for example, which we can draw right here. Uh, the SMS lambda will use SNS to send out real-time notifications to technicians out in the field on their uh, cell yeah. phones. Mm -hmm. The lambda for emails will actually use SES, mm -hmm. uh, which is a great tool. Um, and that's how we email our customers. Very cool. Uh, the persistence lambda will just write persistence right into DynamoDB. Mm -hmm. So we can keep a, a history of our notifications. Very cool. And then we have a lambda that triggers to our UI and our UI gets updated in real time with uh, a Node.js service that's running Socket.io WebSockets. Very cool. Uh, we're using RDS uh, to store our user information, yeah. um, to store our HTML templates, SMS templates, et cetera, yeah. subscriber lists, uh, and stuff like that. Oh, very cool. So, so essentially you have persistent data in DynamoDB. You Correct. mentioned RDS, you have custom information, and then you're notifying them through various different ways. Walk us through the UI a little bit more. Okay. So what do consumers see from the UI space? Well, it's we try to keep our UX patterns very similar. Um, so you'll yeah. see like a notification bell at the top right of our, uh, our UI. Uh -huh. So you'll see, hey, we have a notification in. It'll go, so there's like a red one at the top. Um, and then we have a notifications panel. You can see all of your yeah. notifications. You can acknowledge notifications. Hey, this isn't really an issue, or hey, this is an issue, uh, et cetera. I see. Now, I can think of this as large scale. You mentioned million of different connect connected devices. What are you taking in at this moment in terms of this million, and what are you looking at in terms of scale and growth? Oh, well, I mean, we're obviously growing uh, quite fast. We're at a million devices right now. We're adding tons every week. Uh, yeah. Really, and the cool thing about this whole architecture is, once again, serverless. Uh, we don't have to manage the operations. We don't have to make sure Lambda's running. You guys do that for us. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. What are you seeing for the future? Where do you see this evolve? Uh, well, I mean, this is actually kind of future-proof for uh, the foreseeable future. Everything scales uh, from you guys. We don't have to scale right. anything. We don't have to click any buttons. We don't have to change any configuration settings. Yeah. Everything just works. Is there any obvious benefits that you have seen or realized through going serverless in your organization? 
Yes, less operational costs. <laughs> Wonderful. That, that's the big one for yeah, us. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now, I'm also interested to understand, you know, what your end consumers, walk us through, who is your end customer here for this notification system? So our customers are utilities and municipalities. Yeah. Uh, and obviously they have customers as well. Okay. Um, so our customers are the municipalities and the utilities. There's many different roles, obviously, field service technicians, uh, customer support representatives, uh, et cetera. So that's who this is for. If we have a leak, for example, we have a value stream a leak detection, uh -huh. Ecologics. Yeah. Um, if there's a leak out in the field, we can actually instantaneously tell a field service technician or a team there's a leak out in the field you know, you should probably go fix it. I see. And before you went to serverless architecture, mm -hmm. what what architecture did you use before you walked? You know, came into <laughs> this. What was kind of <laughs> what did you have to go through? What did you have to kind of tackle in that scenario? Well, we kind of really didn't even have real time notifications. Uh, I mean, we did emails and stuff like that. We uh -huh. didn't have SMS. We didn't have uh, WebSocket service. Yeah. There's nothing real time on the front end. Mm -hmm. um, so really, this is all from the ground up, cloud native architecture, right? And yeah, yeah. that makes perfect sense. <laughs> and what does the utilities see? What benefits are they getting from you know your notification yeah. system? So they get instantaneous notifications for anything out in the field. Uh -huh. If uh, one of our metrology customers, if somebody you know uh, tampered uh, yeah. their water meter, yeah, they'll get alerted immediately. If there was a leak, they'll get alerted. If a pressure drops in the yeah. water network, uh -huh. they'll get alerted immediately. Wonderful. Thank you very much for walking us through this architecture. Um, and Eugene, thanks for being on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you um, for watching TMA Live. Back to the launch pad. <laughs>